Join me here today at the Monument Fishery up in Shropshire and I'm going to be offering you my top five winter tips. And tip number one will be to pick the right venue. As I've already said, I'm at Monument Fishery. This is Monument 2. It's a lake, not massive, 10 acres with a good stock of carp in it. Lake in particular, like I was saying, 10 acres, there's a lot of carp in here and they like to come out throughout the whole entire year. So no matter whatever the weather, it could be freezing cold, it could be bright sunshine, it'll produce fish. Whenever you're fishing, it's summer or winter, primarily you want to be getting bites. But when it comes to this time of year, you know, the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer, the fish are slowing up and you're sat there, you really have got a question if you're sitting there basically just to be packing up in a couple of days time having not caught anything. So for me, going fishing on the lake with a lot of carp in it, getting bites and enjoying it, that is probably the most important thing. There is nothing worse than sitting there, freezing cold, soaking wet, almost knowing that you're not going to catch a fish. Use the winter of time if you like to go experiment with rigs fish on places where you can get bites and ultimately have socials with your mates especially when the nights are long tip number two the use of maggots now maggots play a massive part of, of my fishing um, in the winter and probably i would use them a lot more in the warmer months but you know what it's like with the maggots everything is attracted to them so you know if you, your lake's got a lot of silverfish bream roach tench whatever in the warmer months they're going to be attracted to them probably going to get there before the carp and they're going to spook the carp off and they're not cheap so if you go put in a gallon of maggots out it's cost you 20 quid and all you've done really is feed the silverfish in the lake but in the winter when the water cools down a lot the predatory fish hoard all the silvers into the margins and the carp are out there on their own having a, having a trough around maggots will outfish any bait and i am i'm so certain in saying that because i fish so many places over the course of the winter months throughout the years and if you put a bag of maggots out or a bed of maggots out or a bed of what you've been using throughout the year i guarantee you the maggots will go before anything else there's quite a few ways you can use them Obviously, you can spawn them out. Um, the best way that I've found for them is because they're quite light. When you're putting them out there, if there's any sort of undertow or wind, they will sort of go with the, the flow, if you like, um, and you can spread them quite far. Um, the way that I like to do them is to put them inside a, a clear like bag, suffocate them, take all the air out of the bag, and that just basically kills them off um, so they're not wriggling. I know if you was putting them out live, the minute they hit the water, they wouldn't be wriggling anyway, but when they're dead in the bag, for some reason, they're a little bit heavier. Um, into that, I would probably put either lightly crumbed boilies or a powder, and then a little bit of liquid as well. Now, the choice of liquid is, is you know, is entirely up to you. Um, I would keep away from any sort of oil because it's just gonna congeal. And what that does is the, is the liquid and sort of the boily crumb or the powder binds around the maggots, makes them heavier and gets them to the bottom a lot quicker. Um, in terms of using them on the hook, you can either tie them off on bait floss on the back of a, a piece of plastic or a boilie as like a topper. Um, use them inside a mesh PVA bag, give your PVA bag a little glug before you chuck it out there and you've got a little parcel around your hook bait or my favourite way of using them is inside a solid PVA bag. Now when they're in, the, in a, um, a maggot container for example they are going to sweat, create a little bit of moisture in there and again what you want to be doing is adding a powder to this or fine boiling crumb just to take the moisture away because obviously if you're putting them inside the bag you're going to tie your bag, go to cast it and it's all going to come apart. So by putting them inside a small bag, you don't need a big solid bag, small bag that's a mouthful, little layer of crumb or micro pellets in the bottom of your hook bait inside just the master hook, then put your maggots in, pop your lead inside and you want to cap it off as well with just a tiny little bit of pellet just so when you're tightening the bag down that you don't pinch it and burst it because that's going to melt the PVA and that as a little food parcel is perfect to get a bite in the winter. Obviously this time of year the water is a lot colder than what it is in the summer. 
Carp are cold blooded, they're going to be looking for the warmest part of water. Where's the warmest part of the water? Near the surface where the, where the sun's penetrating. So naturally that is going to be where the fish is sitting. So you want to be fishing where the carp are naturally happy to be sitting. They're not going to be sitting down in the dark, gloomy, cold water. They're going to be up getting the last bit of sunlight before the real cold weather hits in. Now, when it comes to zigging in the winter, my general rule is, is that I will not fish under half depth. So if it's 12 foot, I won't ever go below six foot because I feel that all the fish are going to be between six foot and within a foot of the surface. Hook bait choices. I tend to shy away from the blacks um, more so because the fish's eyesight isn't as great and you're not looking for a silhouette. You're looking for something that's rel relatively visual up in the water and something that will catch the carp's attention as it goes by. So for me, the perfect combination is a red aligner and a red piece of foam. Now, as I've already mentioned with the maggots, they're an absolutely deadly winter bait. And to make your zig stand out from the rest, what the aligners offer you to do is because of the band that goes around to hold the foam in place, is you can actually thread a couple of maggots onto a piece of bait floss, thread it round the band, tie it off, and it just gives your maggot zig that extra little edge. Tip number four. Do I scale down when it comes to the winter? Uh, me personally, I don't scale down at all. Uh, the lakes that I fish, the fish that I fish for, are the same fish whether I catch them in April, May, June, or whatever and they, as they are in November, December, and January. The only difference is, is when it comes to the winter, obviously they're not moving as far, and getting onto fish is obviously gonna be a bit harder, but the fish that you're actually fishing for are exactly the same now. I know if I chuck my rig out at any time of the year with my trusty size 5 wide gate beak on that the last thing that's going to be on my mind is losing the fish. Um, if I'm scaling down to maybe a size 10 hook and you're playing a fish in, the always in the back of my mind is I've got a small hook in there, if this fish runs into a snag or something like that I've got no sort of power to get the fish out because I'm relying on such a small piece of metal and if you hook the fish of your dreams and anything ever happened I, I just I would never ever be able to forgive myself for making like a change that really I probably didn't need to make. And another thing as well is the carp visibility in the winter isn't as great. You know, I touched when I done the zigs about coming away from the black foam and putting the red foam on to catch their attention. Now, scaling down in the winter is a complete opposite to what you're trying to achieve with a zig. You know, you're putting a bright colour on to attract them. Um, so in the summer months, in theory, you should be scaling everything down because the fish are a lot more alert as to what's going on. So that for me is another key reason why in the winter, I just do not see any point in scaling anything down. Stick to what you know, stick to what works and stick to what catches you carp. Tip number five, location and weather. As you can see behind me, the wind is absolutely smacking over my shoulder. Now the wind is actually blowing in a southwest direction, which if this was in the warmer months, the chances are I'd probably be sat right on the end of it because that, from experience, is probably where the fish are going to be sitting. Now follow the natural food down there and that's where they'll want to be. But when it comes to the colder months and you've got the cold water, you know, you've got the cold waters churning, the last place that I'm sort of looking to locate fish is right on the end of the wind. So what I'll do is normally come off the back of the wind. Um, off the back of the wind sort of acts as two, two purposes really, you know, it's where would you want to be on a freezing cold day? You wouldn't want to be sat facing into the wind, you'd be off the back of the wind where it's at the warmest. And you know, I sort of think carp are no different to how we'd want to be, you know, we want to be in the warmest part, you know, of the bank if you like, so why wouldn't the fish want to be in the warmest part of the water? The sun is beaming down, the water's like a sheet of glass, you know, there's no wind on it, the first place it's going to warm up is going to be on the back of the wind. So. That is probably primarily the first thing that I'll be looking for. Second thing I'll be looking for was, you know, if I knew the lake had weed beds in it throughout the warmer months, probably be looking to fish around the dying weed because that's going to be holding the heat. The silt's going to be holding the heat. If you've got reed beds, islands, snags, somewhere that the fish can shelter from the cold and sort of tuck themselves away, these are all going to be places where the fish are going to be hiding. In terms of weather, now obviously, if you're on limited time and you can only go when you can go, you know, You've just got to go, no matter whatever the weather. A carp will feed, provided the lake isn't frozen, a carp will feed. Um, and I was fishing up at the monument last year and the water was down to just over three and a half degrees. Now water freezes sort of in and around there, but all the while there's a chop on, all the while there's leads going in, you know, the fish are always up for a feed. And 
one last thing I'd say is by fishing on these busy venues um, with a lot of carp in them, the reason that they carry on producing fish is because that there's angling pressure here and by leads pummeling into the water it keeps the fish moving. So looking at a few things like location, keeping an eye on the weather and another thing as well I would say lastly is that if you do catch fish or you see people catching fish make a note of where they're coming out from because the chances are if someone's caught a fish from an area a certain week that they're not going to move far the following week so you know have a good time walking around make notes of where the fish are coming out from if you've seen any fish check the weather and basically as long as your location's right your rigs tactics and bait are right you should be catching carp all the way through the winter months